Hello everyone, I'm Rogério and I'm going to present the paper Effect of Timer, Top Score and Leaderboard on Performance and Motivation in a Human Computing Game. There's an increasingly high number of crowdsourced systems adopting gamification or even games to attract more volunteers. This strategy is good, but there is a catch. The game needs to be interesting enough to attract and retain a large enough player base. Finding the right balance between accurate data collection and a fun game experience is an extremely difficult task. One way to make human computing games more captivating is for them to emulate commercial video games by incorporating several game mechanics, such as score systems, timers, and leaderboards. However, it's not clear how efficient these game features are at keeping the players interested and motivated in the game and if they can potentially interfere with the quality of the solutions produced. Our research started with a problem in comparative genomes called the genome sorting problem. In the genome sorting problem, we are interested to find the smallest evolutionary distance between two genomes. That means, how many evolutionary events do you need to transform one genome into another? A genome can be re represented as a string of characters, and a genome sorting problem can be simplified as a string matching problem. At first, the problem seems simple, but it is classified as an NP-hard problem when you have genomes with duplicate genes, and that happens almost all of the time. We abstracted this problem as a puzzle, and we created G-Sort, a game where the players have fun solving this puzzle and generate useful data. In this study, we added some new mechanics in sort to investigate if they can contribute to the player's motivation and if they would interfere with the data quality. In this study, we aim to answer these research questions. What's the effect of setting a time limit for each puzzle using a timer? What's the effect of showing the top score? What's the effect of showing the leaderboard coupled with the context-dependent point system? How will these three different game mechanics interact together? In this study, we have two dependent variables, score and completion time. The score is the number of moves used to solve the puzzle, and the completion time is the amount of time used to solve the puzzle. This will become clear when we explain how the game works. G-Sort is a puzzle matching game, in which we have two rows of colored shapes, and the goal is to transform the mutable row and the target row through three different operations, duplications, deletions, and inversions. Each row represents a genome, or a gene order, and each colored shape represents one gene. The three operations represent common observed evolutionary events that can transform a genome through the evolution. We know that the human brain is very good to recognize patterns, so the g starts goal is to compare the sequence of moves used by players to solve the puzzle. The player starts the level with score zero. Every time the player performs an operation, also called move, their score is increased by one. The goal is to solve the puzzle with fewer moves as possible. We used a two qubit mixed factorial design with two within subject factors, top score and leaderboard, and one between subject factor, timer, which can now be either on or off. The timer was chosen to be the between subject factor to avoid a potentially perversive effect where players being introduced to a timer would think that they always need to complete the level as quick as possible, even when it was not there anymore. 24 participants were recruited in total to play the game individually. Half of them play with the time present all the time, and the other half without it. All participants played all the four different combinations of the top score and leaderboard. Every participant answered a short demographic questionnaire and completed an in-game tutorial before starting the experiment. Each game session, one for each condition, contained six different levels of increasing difficulty. The four conditions were played in different orders by the participants to avoid sequence effects. Moreover, the puzzles were shuffled between participants to ensure that the same puzzle was not always associated with the same game condition. 
After playing each game session, a short interview was conducted to get the player's opinion on the last game condition played. A long interview was conducted at the very end of the experiment to get the player's overall opinion of the game, the different conditions, and the three game mechanics studied. In this study, we added three common commercial game mechanics, timer, top score, and leaderboard. Each level, the player had limited amount of time to solve the puzzle, transforming the mutable row in the target row. If the time ends, the player needed to restart the level. Top score represent the best score achieved by a player on the level. In this context, lowest is better. In this study, we set the top score for each level to the number of events that were used to generate the puzzle plus one. This was done to simulate a real top score, which would leave some room for improvement. The live leaderboard shows the player's position against other 9 simulated players. Points were assigned to simulated players in such a way that each real participant could potentially reach the top of the leaderboard during the game session. The player's position was updated at the end of each completed level. Players were rewarded with points after finishing the level. The points were calculated based on the time remaining when the time is present and the difference between the score and top score when the top score is present. We first look at the average score per level. Recall that the score represents the total number of moves made to complete the level. Hence, lower scores represent better performance. Clearly, mean scores are lower when the time is off and the lowest mean, 5.77, is obtained in the top score on, leaderboard on condition. This can be explained by the fact that the top score gives the players an idea of what an achievable score can be, and the combination of the point system with the leaderboard further encourages players to achieve a lower score. On the other hand, the highest mean score, 7.47, occurred when the timer was on in the top score of leaderboard on condition. Players trying to complete the level faster to get more points, coupled with the absence of the top score in this condition, probably encourage the players to complete the level as quick as possible without as much consideration for the number of moves they were using. We also look at the average completion time per level. We can clearly observe that the average completion time were considerably lower whenever the time was present. The variability of completion time is also much higher when the time is absent, as demonstrated by the standard deviation, which are approximately twice as large compared with the ones of the timer on group. Mean completion times are very similar between all four possible conditions when the time is present. However, the completion times are significantly higher when the top score is on and the time is off which indicates that the players are taking more time in those conditions as they try to reach or beat the top score. A mixed factorial ANOVA was performed to check for main effects and interactions on the three factor studies on players' score and completion time. The analysis detected a main effect of the timer and the top score on both scores and completion times. However, no significant main effect of the leaderboard was detected on the two dependent variables. We looked in the simple effect of timer on both the score and completion time. It turns out that the timer has significant effect on the score only when the leaderboard is present, whereas the timer has significant effect on each of the four conditions for the completion time. We observed interesting interaction between the studied game features. The lowest average score are obtained when the time is off and both the leaderboard and the top score are on. On the other hand, some of the highest average scores are obtained when both the timer and the leaderboard are on and the top score is off. In other words, the point system that comes with the leaderboard seems to encourage players to make more moves in presence of the timer, which is probably a consequence of players just trying to complete the level as fast as possible. On the completion time perspective, the players tend to spend more time on the level whenever the top score is on and the time is off. In this study, we observed interesting effects of timer and top score. Giving the players an idea of an ideal number of moves influences players to spend more time solving the puzzle and produce solutions with fewer moves. One important detail about the game is that sub-option solutions to the puzzles are easier to find than option solutions. When the time is present, 
Players seem to take the easier road to solve the puzzles quicker, but using more moves. Some players like the added challenge and excitement provided by timer, top score and leaderboard, while others dislike the added pressure and wanted a more relaxing game experience. The only thing that was constant across all the participants was that they preferred to have at least one of these conditions presented all the time. Based on our study, some lessons can be drawn for designing a human computing game. From a player's motivation perspective, it might be beneficial to implement multiple game features and automatically alternate between the different game modes to keep different types of players motivated. Another option could be to let the players choose which game mode they want to play. From a data acquisition point of view, timers should be implemented when a large number of solutions are necessary in a short amount of time, but they should be avoided when the task is very hard or when top quality solutions are required. On the other hand, presenting a top score is beneficial to guide the players towards higher quality solutions, but it can also be frustrating if it's too hard to reach. To mitigate, mitigate this, human computing game designers should consider allowing the player to advance to the next level if the top score was not reached and are retiring puzzles when the top score seems unbeatable. The goal of this study was to investigate the effect of different game mechanics, timer, top score and live leaderboards on players' performance and motivation in a human computing game. We observed that the timer and the top score had significant effects on players' score and completion time. Presenting an achievable top score resulted in more optimal solutions, but at the expense of completion time, whereas the timer had the opposite effect on players. Our findings tend to suggest that customizable of the game interface or letting players choose between different game modes might be preferable to promote players' motivation in a human computer Whoa. game. Our findings still left important questions unanswered. One of them is what motivates users to participate in and stay engaged with human computing, crowdsourcing, and citizen science applications in general. Human computing, crowdsourcing, and citizen science platforms should not only be focused on companies or scientists collecting data. They must also be concerned about citizens actively participating in problem solving, collaborating with other participants, and learning something valuable from the, from the experience. Studying how to properly give back to the users, how to improve learning outcomes from participants in these platforms, how to promote collaborative work, all are crucial questions that need to be answered in future works. Thank you.